It's this unexpected thing when you come out of the sand hills or from the Badlands to the north. You see this beautiful, verdant green valley um, with this gorgeous little river going through it. You're not looking at houses or power lines and stuff like that. It's just mm -hmm. you and nature. Anytime you're on this river, you never really know quite for sure what you're going to see when you go around the corner. I love the valley, and I like having the people come here that appreciate the valley for what it has to offer them. The scenery, the fun that they can have in the water, the families. It's got the sand hills of Nebraska and deciduous forests and all these various ecosystems really meet here at the Niobrara and it makes just one of the most unique places here in North America. This beautiful clean river flowing down through the middle of it and it's a sight to behold. I had a rancher tell me just a couple days ago that no matter where you're from in the country, if you come here and you look around for a little bit, you're gonna find something that reminds you of home. The Niobrara National Scenic River is the essence of home, flowing through and connecting the lives of those who have lived and visited the river valley throughout time. Ponca, Pawnee, Lakota, and other tribes fished, hunted, and camped along the cool waters of the Niobrara. Overcoming a period of forced relocation and other hardships, Many still consider the river home. Oh, Ponca Ijaja Wawitate, Tenuda, Wahe Ijaja Wawitate, Randy Tebow. In the Ponca language, Niobrara means running waters or wide flowing waters. As a Ponca, the river means to me life. It provides nutrients to everything that is living. Water is life. Without water, we do not exist. Water percolates from springs, creating ribbons of life, cutting through the south wall of the Niobrara, feeding more than 200 waterfalls. Cool canyons carved by the spring-fed creeks provide an oasis of life for paper birch and aspen, more commonly found in boreal forests hundreds of miles to the north. When you drive through these gorgeous seas of grass, when you drop down into this beautiful little valley, one of the very first things you're gonna notice is the trees. We have a unique meeting of ponderosa pine forests from the west, deciduous forests from the east, and boreal forests from the north. And they all mingle right here in this part of the Niobrara River Valley. They don't do that in too many other places on Earth. Let's see if we can find any cool spiders over here. That's not a spider, that's a daddy long legs. They eat raspberries. I see them. I just see some over there. They love berries.
We have an unusual combination of prairies. We have mixed grass prairie here, we have sand hills prairie, and we have tall grass prairie found right here along this river. And each different type of prairie provides homes for a different type of life. The variety of grasses and wildflowers in the prairie is part of what makes it so beautiful. The river is fed by springs that are developed out here in the sand hills. The water, the rainfall falls on the sand and it's very porous, soaks in, and that comes out in springs and goes into the river. The river is really the lifeblood of this whole area. Uh, it uh, provides a water source for a lot of the animals that live in the area. Bison are native to this part of North America and are at home on the prairie land along the river. Thriving herds are maintained at the Fort Niobrara National Wildlife Refuge and the Nature Conservancy's Niobrara Valley Preserve. The hoof action and everything like that is, is good for the prairie. It helps the, the grasses regenerate, spreads the seed, helps them grow. Bison were, were native to North America and they belong here. The Niobrara is beautiful in the summer. But later in the year, it turns into an absolute winter wonderland. You get these beautiful seeps that come out from the bluffs that freeze into these curtains of ice. The rocks surrounding the Niobrara River contain evidence that life has found a home here for millions of years. The area contains 15 world-class fossil sites. You know, the Niobrara River is just super rich as far as fossil resources go. Paleontologists have been collecting fossils there since 1850s, thousands and thousands of fossils. I equate, you know, each bone to a piece in a big jigsaw puzzle. The more pieces you have, uh, the better idea you have is what the landscape and what the animal interactions were. The more time we spend here, the more puzzle pieces we're going to find, and the more uh, clearer picture we'll have as to what Nebraska looked like 13 million years ago. Mm -hmm. 
Much of the land surrounding the Niobrara National Scenic River has been home to ranchers for generations. My grandfather had come over from the Alsace Lorraine and homesteaded right where we're at in 1884. We're one of the very first uh, homesteaders in Kippaw County. Well, my, uh, my family come in the 1880s, somewhere in there. And I would be the fifth generation, so we've been around a long time. That river is home to a lot of people still, and they've taken really good care of it, just been really good stewards to the land. Once your land's been in the family for 100 years, you feel pretty obligated not to mess up, you know, to, to be the generation that loses it. Been here pretty much all my life. In the summertime, we'd uh, get out of the hay field and we'd go to the river and swim around in the evening and there would be nobody there but a bull snake. They started in uh, with Boy Scouts canoeing on the river and then my dad actually subleased some canoes and then it kind of just kept growing from there, you know. We used to take two big tractor tubes and tie them together and put a piece of plywood on top and made a raft out of it. And Dad put a lawn chair on there and a cooler and a pole about 12 foot long, and that's how we used to go down the river. A lot of people was catching on and thought it looked pretty fun, so they wanted to join us, and that's the way it got to go on. Once you get into the valley of it and you get on the river, you can just relax and you can just take in everything around you. And I just love, I mean, the beauty of it and the serenity of it. Nineteen miles of river and 30,000 acres of land would have been condemned by a dam that was once proposed for the river. Right here at the camp where we're located, right along the river, it would have been at least 60 foot deep. Why did I want to save it? Well, because it's a natural beauty that everybody should enjoy. Some people didn't think it was necessary to save it as a well and scenic river, but I'd sure hate to see another dam here. You just don't see rivers like this all over. We had the first Save the Niobrara meeting down there at our campground, and they all got together. They got Audubon Society to, to help back them, and they all went to Washington, D.C. The National Scenic River, one of the reasons that we were in favor of it was they've got the resources and the power to protect the valley keep that resource as it is. It's a way that we can reassure the future generations that it will be there. Our folks, they probably lost a lot of friends over the deal because there was quite a few people around that were wanting the dam. A lot of the relatives said, why don't you sell out and move out? He said, no, this is home and this is where he wanted to be. They would rather fight than move out. Well, I guess I'm pretty glad that they uh, stuck to their guns and helped save it like it is, keep it natural and for future generations. I mean, it hasn't been overly uh, 
developed, you know, for, it's been pretty much left alone. Well, hopefully I've done something to help protect the area and keep it natural. And I would hope that people in the, in the future that come along would uh, do the same and help protect the river valley. There's something about water and the peacefulness of the whole valley. Um, when you get on a river with the water flowing and then you're able to hear the wildlife, the birds, the nature around, it's just like, it's pretty, it's just, it's creation, it's inspiring, it's revitalizing. I feel the presence of my ancestors when I'm close to the areas where they would have camped or where they would have lived. I find myself looking at the landscape and how they would have used the landscapes, what ceremonies would have took place in the landscape. And when I'm in certain areas where I know they were, where they lived, I get goosebumps because I can feel them there. Sometimes you just have to be able to see that and be in that environment and smell the air and see the clouds and see the light and see that light reflecting off that water. When I see, always see that river valley, I just kind of exhale. You know, that's kind of my, huh, kind of coming home feel, you know? And um, I'm blessed now that I still live by it and I can still see that beauty. I've enjoyed ranching here. I've enjoyed when I was involved with the canoe business. You know, I, I love getting up in these canyons. I like the hunting, the, everything it has to offer. We've got trees, grass, rocks, water. What more does a guy need? <laughs>